In our discussion on objects moving inside finite potential wells, we said that in quantum mechanics, a particle such as an electron can actually penetrate a potential barrier and end up in a region that is normally forbidden by classical mechanics. So what exactly do we mean by that statement? To see what we mean, let's consider the following analogy to the macroscopic world. Let's suppose we have a hill with a height h as shown in the following diagram. We also have a ball of mass m that is rolling along the ground with the kinetic energy k when it ends up at the bottom of our hill. So as it ascends our hill, the kinetic energy that is stored in the motion of that object will be transformed to potential energy, to gravitational potential energy of that object. Now we know from classical mechanics that if the potential, if the gravitational potential of the hill is too high, that is, if the gravitational potential energy of the object at the top of the hill is greater than the initial kinetic energy of that object at the bottom, there is absolutely no way that our object will be able to end up on the other side of that hill. So that basically means that the object will end up at some position and will continue rolling back, will basically begin to roll back. Now in quantum mechanics, things aren't so simple. In quantum mechanics, what this actually tells us, there is some probability that our object will end up on the other side of the potential barrier even though the potential energy of the barrier is greater than the kinetic energy of that object. So once again, in classical mechanics, we see that there's no way the object will be able to uh, end up on the other side of the hill because the height is simply too great. The gravitational potential energy of the object at the top is greater than the kinetic energy of that object at the bottom of the hill. But in quantum mechanics, even though the kinetic energy is less, the object can still end up at the other side as we'll see in just a moment. So once again, suppose now instead of looking at this macroscopic object, let's suppose we have a microscopic object. So suppose we have a particle of mass m, for example, an electron, and the electron has no potential energy as in this case, and it's moving with a kinetic energy k when it encounters a potential, but in this case, we're dealing with electric potential on the macroscopic level we dealt with gravitational potential on the atomic level we usually deal with electric potential so the electric the electron encounters uh, an electric potential barrier such that the electric potential energy u naught is greater than the kinetic energy so based on classical mechanic discussion we see that the particle should technically bounce off and reverse in direction reverse its motion the same way that this ball, if it doesn't have enough energy to surmount our hill, it will stop and reverse and travel downward in the reverse direction. So in quantum mechanics, there basically is a non-zero probability that the particle will actually end up on the other side of our barrier even though the kinetic energy of the particle is less than our potential energy of that barrier. So, let's examine the following diagram. We have the y-axis, which is the energy, the x-axis, which is the position of that object. So we have the particle, the electron, is traveling along the horizontal axis. So notice, this is our barrier, our potential barrier, and the width of this barrier is given by the distance L. So our potential energy U naught is greater than the kinetic energy of that object, and as it 
travels according to classical mechanics, it should basically bounce off and reverse directions and move in the opposite direction. But what actually happens is that particle has a probability of actually trespassing, actually moving across and ending up on the other side of that barrier. So we can think of this region as being a region where this, where there is an electric field that basically repels this electron's motion. So remember, any particle in quantum mechanics is described by a wave function given by psi. Now a free particle such as this electron can be described by a wave function that takes the form of a sinusoidal wave. So our electron creates this wave which basically travels, it has a certain amplitude and when it enters this region it begins to decay, decrease exponentially However, before it actually decreases to zero, it resurfaces on the other side and continues to move, although with a smaller uh, with a smaller amplitude. So this exponential decrease was spoken about when we discussed particles moving inside finite potential wells. Now, this ability of the electron of the particle to penetrate barriers, potential barriers, is is known as quantum tunneling and two important terms must be discussed when we discuss quantum tunneling. So we have transmission coefficient given by T which is basically the fraction of particles that make it across to the other side and the reflection coefficient given by R which represents the fraction of particles that reflect and travel back. For example, if the total number of particles that collide with our barrier is given by 100 and our transmission coefficient is 0 0.1 then that means 10% of those particles will be transmitted. So 10 of those 100 particles will actually transmit the themselves while 90 will reflect and bounce back. So basically T plus R, the transmission coefficient plus the reflection coefficient is always equal to 1 where 1 corresponds to 100% of those particles. Now T, the transmission coefficient, is approximately equal to E to the power of negative 2 multiplied by alpha multiplied by L, where L is the width of our potential barrier and alpha is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by M multiplied by U naught minus E divided by H bar, where H bar is our constant, Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, M is the mass of that particle u naught is the height of this barrier in terms of its potential energy and E is the total energy of that particle.